So here's my real world example of parallel lines cut by a transversal. I've got two roadways right here, one here and one here. They look and appear to be parallel to each other. And then we are cutting them with Oak Street right here. And that's going to be our transversal. And what we get from that is we get an angle that is just barely obtuse and we get an angle that's just barely acute. But what we really get is two full circles out of this, which are 360 degrees. I like to say that they look like pizzas almost. There's a ton of vocabulary that goes with this. Let's check that out first because math vocabulary is a second language for most of you. Slow down. We have to know our vocabulary before we go any further. We've got to know supplementary angles. Supplementary angles, two angles, they equal 180 degrees when added together. We have to know how to write an algebraic equation. It's a mathematical sentence that contains an equal sign, and we've got to be able to solve an algebraic equation when we write it. We've got to know vertical angles. Vertical angles, a pair of opposite congruent, which means equal, congruent angles formed by intersecting lines. These two would be 120, and they're across from each other, which means these two angles would be 60 degrees each. All of them all together would equal 360 degrees. There's our circle once again. We've got to know what an acute angle is. Acute angle is definitely less than 90, and we've got to notice that when our transversal intersects our parallel lines. Obtuse angle. It's greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180. We're going to see a lot of those. Angles that are next to each other are adjacent. Alternate interior angles. This happens when two angles are inside of the parallel lines and they are on opposite sides of the transversal. Angle 5 and angle 4 are the same obtuse angle, which means they are equal to each other and they are on the inside of the parallel line. Alternate exterior angles are angles that are on the outsides of the parallel lines and they're on opposite sides of the transversal. Again, number one is an obtuse angle and number two down here is an obtuse angle. They are the same degree amounts. Transversal. Transversal is the line that intersects two or more lines or what I should say is parallel lines. Corresponding angles. This one's a big one. This is basically angles that are formed by a transversal cutting through two or more lines that are in the same relative position. We know that a circle is a figure that contains 360 degrees. I use circles all the time when I teach angles. Finally, we've got a straight angle, an angle that measures exactly 180 degrees. Ah! Let's do a couple examples together now, and let's really figure out what angles are created when a transversal intersects two parallel lines. I have attached a link to this worksheet in the description, so you can go ahead and print it out if you're looking at this at home, but everybody else is gonna follow along in class. We're gonna take notes on what we do right here. We've got two horizontal parallel lines. And what you notice, I love this, because they've drawn the circle for me. You can see that that circle is going around our intersection, which is this point here and here. And what we have is we have angle A shaded in. And they want to know, they want you to name the angles that are congruent or equal to angle A. What I teach you guys is angle A right there by itself is an obtuse angle. All of the obtuse angles that are created in these two circles are the same size. I'm gonna say that again, the same size. All obtuse angles are the same size. So I look at C and B, they kinda of look like slices of pizza almost, and they're not near the size, those are acute angles. D, which is vertical to it, is also obtuse. Now. I gotta backtrack, these angles were created by this line right here. This is our transversal that we saw in the vocabulary. 
This is the line that's cutting through it. Now, my other two that I have here, B and C, those are acute angles. All acute angles will be the same size when you have parallel lines cut by a transversal. So what do I mean by all of the acute angles? Well, I've got another set of four down below here. This circle, this pizza, if you will, is the same exact pizza as the one up above. We had a term that was just defined, corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are the exact same angle in the exact same position. And what that means is it's the same slice of pizza. If you notice here, angle A, I have angle A right here, and it's in the top left corner. It's an obtuse angle. Well, angle P is the same slice of pizza in this pie down below. If I grab a different color highlighter, I've got angle B, which is a small little acute angle here. The one that's in the same exact position is angle Q. That's also acute. Angle D, this obtuse angle, is the exact same as angle R. It's the same exact size angle and they're both obtuse. It's just in a different circle, but they're in the same position. And finally, that leaves us with our last acute angle, our bottom left angle. Our bottom left angle is also going to be acute. Bottom left, they're the same size, they are the same exact angle. So we can label them accordingly. There we go. So now we're starting to recognize that, okay, all the acute angles will be the same. All of the obtuse angles will be the same size. And from here, we can go ahead and actually find out what the other angles are gonna be just by giving, well, one angle measurement. Here's a set of parallel lines and they gave us this angle here of 109 degrees. One thing that I know right away is I'm going to look for the corresponding angle to 109. And one of the things that I want my students to do is I want them to complete the circle here. So I'm gonna draw that going all the way around along with my angle down here that we're trying to find. Now, I see 109, 109 degrees is in the bottom left of this circle that I've drawn, bottom left. So I'm gonna go ahead and find the bottom left angle of the red circle. Bottom left would be right here. These two angles are corresponding, which means they have to be the same size. This is also 180 degrees. Now all I need to make sure that I understand is that I have a half circle created from these two angles. My acute and obtuse angle will always equal 180 degrees when we deal with transversals. Well, that's pretty simple. So I'm gonna write it as an equation and I like to teach using number bonds. I haven't seen anyone write equations, two-step equations or one-step equations using number bonds, but that's what they are. They help us write the equation. I know that our total is going to be 180 degrees. We have a straight line. The angle that I have, the part that's already known, is 109 degrees. And then I want to know the question mark. I'm going to mark that with an X. So I'm going to use a variable. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, my total is equal to the two terms that I have. And these terms are being added together. I'm going to write it as an algebraic equation. 180 is equal to X plus 109. Now, with number bonds, we know the opposite of adding is subtraction. And so we would end up getting x by subtracting 109 from 180. And that's going to give us 71 degrees. Now, how do we do that algebraically? Well, here's a one-step equation. I'm going to subtract 109 on both sides of the equation. So this cancels out. And when I subtract 109 from 180, I still get my answer of 79 degrees. So number bonds helping us solve equations. Last piece. Here we have just eight angles, all labeled with numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to try this yourself. You can pause the video. If I say that this angle, angle two right here, is 40 degrees, you should be able using your knowledge of vertical angles, using your knowledge of corresponding angles, and using your knowledge of supplementary angles, you should be able to find all of the degrees of every 
angle. Go ahead and pause the video right now and see if you can find the other angles. You guys can see that 140 plus 40 is 180. If I add 140 and 140, that's 280 plus another 80 degrees with 40 plus 40 is 360. If I use corresponding angles, angle two is the same spot top right as angle six. That's gotta be 40 degrees. 40 is, angle six is vertical to angle seven, so this has to be 40 degrees. And then using our knowledge of a half circle once again can provide the rest that we need. That's transversals, people.